Hey guys, Max Roberts here from Go Left Gaming. The episode of the podcast you're about to listen to, when we recorded it, it didn't quite have a name at the time. And it's actually pretty funny. If you go on our YouTube channel and you watch the extras behind the scenes, you'll see that we were flashing Game Boys across the screen before we started recording. And uh, after the show, literally maybe 10 minutes after the show, Rocky came up with the name The Game Boys. It's we love it. It was an instant click for us, but throughout the show we kind of don't have a name yet. So I just wanted to apologize in advance for that, and uh, I hope you enjoy the show. So let's get right into it. Hello and welcome to Go Left Gaming's unofficially unnamed podcast that we are thinking of a name right now. We can't really think of anything. I am your host, Max Roberts, and joined to me tonight is Alex Ray. Hello. We have Mitchell Morgan. What's up, guys? And Rocky Rockdar. You could just call me Rocky Ankeny, but uh, hey, how's it going? Rocky. Rocky, <laughs> Rocky. And we've got a jam-packed show for you today. Uh, we're recording on September 13th, a wonderful Friday night. And I thought we'd start off the first episode by just introducing ourselves, uh, talking about some hobbies, uh, gaming things, and then of course, with the zombie apocalypse question, because zombies are all the rage right now. So, Alex, why don't you start us off? Tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay. Well, Max, (laughs) I, my name is Alex Ray, and my hobbies include reading, learning about history, Writing short stories, learning random bits of trivia, gaming, watching anime, um, cars, making tea, swimming, mountain biking, and long walks on the beach. <laughs> oh my gosh. AW, I'm starting to think that you might be getting some responses from women after this is over. <laughs> That's the, that or, is the aim, Rocky. That or is the aim. You could have just been describing Grand Theft Auto V. I could have been. You could have been. Which uh, might come up later on in the podcast. Potentially. So yeah. Probably not. Probably not. It's not big news or anything. Yeah. I, I mean, it's it's just by some like small little developer. Nothing big. Yeah. Um, but anyways, um, shall I go ahead and go on with what my favorite um, gaming franchise is? Yeah. Do that. Okay. So I'm just going through all my personal stuff. Just revealing everything to you guys. Anyways. My favorite gaming franchise, um, which has a very near and dear place in my heart, is... Okay, I need to take a deep breath here. Shin Megami Tensai Persona. Okay, there we go. Um, It is a Japanese RPG uh, made by Atlas, who is an amazing um, game company. Makes very few bad games. And it is like a modern... It's an RPG set in like modern day real world, and it's a really, really cool game. Okay, so, um, who's next? Uh, is it Mitchell. my turn? Mitchell. Mitchell. Yay. Um, what are we going to do about the zombie question? Do we go through uh, that after everyone talks about themselves? Sure, we'll do that. Yeah, I'll propose okay. it, and then we can all present our answers. Alright, so my name is Mitchell Morgan. Um, what's interesting about me? Um, in my spare time, I am a fan of a show called Podcast Beyond, which uh, I've made an app for, which is another one of my hobbies. I like to make apps, experiment with programming, those kind of things. Absolutely. Um, obviously, I'm a, a game fan. That's that's why I'm here. Uh, mostly a PlayStation fan, but I, I love I love everything. I love everyone. Um, I like playing music. I like writing, um, reading. Um, I, I just like to do a lot of things. I like, I like to keep it rounded, you know. I'm a uh, big fan of everything, really. Um, favorite gaming franchise would probably have to be Portal. Which, yeah. um, the original Portal, which I played, like, four years ago, was the thing that got me into the game industry. Because that, well, I'm not in the game industry, but got me, like, into reading news and, like, reading sites like IGN. Because it was the first kind of more hardcore game that I'd ever played. And that was the first like PC game I'd ever played, and um, plus Portal's just so good. 
I don't know if you guys are fans of Portal, oh. if you've played Portal Oh, yeah, 1, I love 2. Portal. Yeah, you and okay. me, Mitchell, okay. we play Portal 2 co-op sometimes. Portal 2... Uh, Suck. Um, yeah. Such a good game. Yeah. That's that's about it for me. All right, Rocky, how about Rocky? you? All right, well, my name is Rocky Rockdar, or as, you know, my real actual name is uh, Rocky Ankeny. Spoiler alert. Whoa. Um, yeah, no That's one, not what no your Facebook that. says. That, no, it does not say that. Um, anyways, Rockdar was a nickname given to me. It's a, it's a long story. We'll discuss that some other day. Um, but that, that was my name. So, uh, let's see, a few hobbies of mine. I enjoy filmmaking in my spare time uh, for YouTube. It's been a while since I've put anything up. I've been doing a lot of local projects, so we're trying to get that started back up. Um, uh, let's see, what else? I absolutely love uh, playing uh, my instrument, uh, the French horn or the melphone. I actually marched this summer with the Cadet Drum and Bugle Corps, um, I, we got third place in the entire world. I thought that's kind of a, a big deal. Something <laughs> that's amazing. awesome. Yeah, I love music. Cool. I toured the country. I actually was about to meet up with A.W. in Louisiana and his giant hornets, but he had something to do. Oh, so, okay. No, no no hard feelings at all. I understand. I, I'm, uh, I'm sorry, Rocky. I'm sorry. My other hobbies include um, eating and <laughs> sleeping. <laughs> Occasionally, uh, actually, I love teaching. That's what I want to go to school for is music education. I want to be a high school band director. Very um, cool. And of course, I love games. I love playing video games. That's also something I, I've always been, you know, drawn to, even as like a, a child. Um, oh wow! Excuse so me. my favorite gaming franchise. Uh, I I thought long and hard about this one, and it ended up being a tie because I was like, well, if I was to see a new game was wow. coming out, regardless of all the reviews that come out, would I buy it? Would I just have to buy it because I've bought everything in that series pretty much so far? So it came down to a tie between The Legend of Zelda and the Halo franchise. So Nice. Sorry about the for, thunder and rain. Obviously, I don't think that needs any further explanation cuz oh, speaking speaking of Halo, I have to I have to mention this real quick cuz it's hysterical. Uh, Microsoft uh, is rumored to be de developing their own Siri-like program and they've codenamed it Cortana. And, oh yeah, mm -hmm. and Amazon, the oh, Amazon boy. video game channel uh, Twitter account was tweeting just jokes about Cortana being your assistant, and she's. Uh, it's, uh, one example was Cortana, tell my wife I'll be home for dinner, and then Cortana's response was, "Don't make, uh, don't make a promise to a girl you can't keep." <laughs> <laughs> I about died laughing. Uh, that's a Halo Four reference, I believe. It was Halo 4 when she said that, right? It was, uh, it was 3 and 4. 3 uh, and 4. Believe. Okay, anyway. A little Halo tangent. Anything else, Rocky? Um, I, I don't think I'm leaving anything out. Alright, cool. Uh, well, I'm Max. Max Roberts. I, uh, I like to write. That's what I kind of recently discovered. I've always loved writing in video games. That's kind of what I do. That's why I started Go Left Gaming, uh, a blog just to improve my writing and share my love of video games with the world. So those are kind of my hobbies. I also I love movies. I love film. I take multiple film classes. I love studying it and kind of going behind the scenes with the director and things and it's just that's another thing I love. But mostly mostly video games for sure. Favorite gaming franchise. Can it, it, it can it be a franchise if it only has one game in it? I already know what it's going to be. Do you? You probably do. Yes, I do. Yeah. Because you talk about it every oh. single time. <laughs> it's so talk. worth it. It's so worth it. It's You can barely see the box right there. It's The Last of Us. If, if that counts as a franchise, The Last of Us for sure. Mitchell has a beautiful poster in the back there that I'm so jealous of. Speaking but, of beautiful posters, just look at how beautiful that is. Yes. If any of you okay. know what that is. If anyone knows Rocky. what that is, you're... If, if you are a girl and you know what that is, <laughs> and you like everything A.W. mentioned in his introduction, please message him on his Facebook account. There you go. But if, if you don't want to call it a franchise yet because it only has one game, I'd say Kingdom Hearts, which is so, fantastic. So I, I have a question. Is um, 
is The Last of Us open up like Uncharted where it could be expanded into more games or did it end on a definite note? Uh, the game itself? The Last of Us? Yeah. The Last of Us is a single whole experience through and through. It could... Yeah. They could never be another game in that series again. Will they do it? Oh. Will they do it? Most likely. I don't know why your video is not showing up. Huh. Weird. Oh, there you go. But they they probably will. They made so much money. Yeah. It's so mm -hmm. such a well received game that they probably I mean, will make another game. Honestly, I'd hope they don't because I just love where they left it off. That I don't I don't want the chance of them to ruin it. I I thought uh, that was just so beautifully crafted. The multiplayer is perfect. The story they told so was good. perfect. I loved the interpretation you had at the end, where it wasn't clear. You kind of had to just figure out for yourself what could have happened. Yeah. I loved I loved the note that they I think on. I uh, if they do another game, I don't think it'll be with the main characters Joel and Ellie. I think mm -hmm. it's just the world they created is definitely open for other games. But uh, Joel Joel and Ellie's story is done for sure and yeah. perfect little segue into the final question just kind of introduce ourselves i kind of came up with this question i thought it'd be fun to hear everyone's answer the question is during a zombie apocalypse would you choose either a shotgun with only two bullets left or a machete with only three strikes left so we're applying a little bit of video game physics here Machete just breaks after three hits. So do you choose mm. a machete and get up close and kill him, or a shotgun, which gives you a little bit of range to run away? Alex, why don't you start us off? We'll go in the same order we just introduced ourselves. Okay. Well, first, Max, let me introduce my beautiful and wonderful machete. <laughs> um, it, 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 it is from World War II, and, um, got, and my grandfather's friend gave it to him. Very cool. And... I and I live um, in Louisiana, and where I live, there is a lot of um, there's a lot of woods and there's a lot of shrubbery. So this comes in handy very often. Um, anyways, but what? But my point is, is I will personally pick the machete for the reason that, that I am skilled in using a machete, and a machete is not something that is really as easy as it looks to use. Mm. If some random person picked up a machete off the street, they wouldn't be able to um, kill a zombie with it. So, I personally would go with the machete, um, mainly because you can kill zombies silently. Mm. If you have a shotgun, you're going to attract every zombie within a 20-mile radius. And yeah. so, if you have the machete, you can probably um, do better off, depending on your situation. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mitchell, shotgun, machete. All right, when you first sent that question, I immediately chose shotgun because I, I was thinking, like, it might be more practical at that point because, you know, you could get a little bit of range, so if they try to charge you, you'd still have a chance to run. But at the same time, like Alex said, a shotgun is very loud. It's You'd have to shoot them in the head or else nothing's going to happen. So I'm going to go with Alex and choose machete because I think it, it would be a much cleaner kill it would be, um, I would say maybe a lot easier to kill. I I've never used a machete, Alex. You'd have to tell me that, but um, I mean, if you know how to use one, you probably could. Okay. And the only downside of that was, I I don't want to get my hands dirty. Like I don't want to chop off a zombie head and get like zombie guts all over me. But I mean, wear if gloves. I'm with like, <laughs> wear gloves. That's what we'll do. I'll find gloves in the zombie apocalypse. Um. So yeah, I'm going machete. All right, Rocky? Well, I immediately, you know, it was kind of a dilemma. I was like, well, both seem like pretty terrible, terrible options at first. <laughs> I was like, well, you got two shots or three hits. Well, hmm. So, and then I was like, wait a minute. Hello, shotgun. Obvious choice because, number one, you can shoot the two bullets, right? Right. But then you can, like, use the shotgun itself as, like, a blunt object. That's what I was Ooh. thinking. Like, you can even take yeah. it apart, sharpen it, and, like, use it as its own machete, perhaps. <laughs> if you were to I was just thinking that. hit him like a baseball bat with it. Actually, yeah. that wouldn't work. You would, like, break it. But, I mean, if you went, like, that yeah. with it. Oh. Yeah. Just, yeah well. Like, when you're not... As many ways we could figure out to use it. Yeah, I, 
I, I'm in the same boat as Rocky shotgun. Uh, I, I'm a decent shot. I'm better with a gun than I am with a machete. That's how I'll stick it under. And so I would feel more comfortable with a shotgun. Who cares if a bunch of zombies are coming to chase me? I, sh I should be upstairs with the stairs kicked out anyway so they can't climb up there. I would have my zombie survival guide. I'd shotgun all the way, and then I can use it as a, you know, a blunt object to beat their brains in. As violent as that sounds. Alaska. Sounded. Alaska is where I'd go. Ooh, good idea. Snow. Oh, that would be tough to keep provisions, so. though. Actually, no, because um, if you go up north far enough, the zombies can't, like, if it gets cold enough, like, they're going to freeze up. Right, 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 right. So that's it. So we've got... Two machetes and two shotguns. We're divided mm -hmm. camp. Yep. All right, Sticking guys. With it. Very cool. Let's. Before we get into the news for this episode, I thought uh, we'd start off every episode with just what games we've been playing. I figured that would be. Um, I usually like to hear what other people have played and just hear a little bit of thoughts about it. So, Alex. Just kind of in this, we'll just keep this order. Um, so, Alex, what what have you been playing? I have been playing um, Final Fantasy XIII. I have almost beaten it. Um, I'm at the very, very last part, and I've gotten stuck on a boss that is just being a pain. Um, anyways, but I know a lot of people have been complaining about not liking it because it's very linear, but I actually... Because of the combat system, I've really enjoyed it. Um, I've also um, been playing Mass Effect 1, and I just got um, like three hours into it, and I just got onto the Citadel, and I've gone and like broken down a bar and uh, people that were kidnapping people. So, yeah, that's what happens when the first three hours of <laughs> Mass Effect. Um, Effect 1. Yeah. Okay. I got the trilogy. Oh, Ooh. nice. So you're playing it on PS3? Mm-hmm. So how do you like it so far? Because I'm a huge Mass Effect fan. So I'll, um, how do you like it? I I really like the gameplay. I'm playing as the soldier class. Okay. Um, the only problem I have is that the first one, it has horrible frame, frame rate issues. Whenever mm -hmm. you're in the Citadel, everything, it, I mean, it drops down to like 15 frames per second in some areas. It is an old but game, I, though. Yeah, but I know that they've um, like fixed it in like the later iteration. So I'm not going to give it. I'm not going to give a game from 2005 or six, some somewhere around there, um, issues about frame rate. Okay, fair enough. Is that everything that you've been playing? I've been watching Psycho Pass, but besides from that, yeah. Nice, Mitchell. Mitchell, how about you? What have you been playing? The only. The thing I've been playing recently is Spelunky on my Vita. I went nice. on a trip like last week, so I got a lot of free time on the plane. So I got Spelunky. It's a game I've never played before, so Vita was my first interaction. I'd recommend not playing that game on a plane because it gets really infuriating, um, and it's not fun to just have a meltdown in the middle of a plane. <laughs> but look. Mitchell, take my advice. Never get Persona 4 Golden and play it on hard mode on a plane. You will be cussing, you will be <laughs> killing people. Oh. Uh, All right, okay. Uh, do, you, do you have a Vita? No, not yet. I, in fact, we'll get to that later. Okay. I was just curious if you played it on Vita yet. Um, mm -hmm. But Spelunky, if you've never heard of it, quick, it's just like a 2D... Uh, treasure hunting game. It's really hardcore. Um, it's a roguelike, so games are really quick, so it's a perfect game on the Vita. Plays really, really, really well, but it's just super hard. Yeah. Um, I definitely recommend it if you have a Vita. I think it's perfectly at home on the Vita. Does it have and touch controls? Touch. No. Okay. No touch controls. Um, I'm glad. Uh, Vita games with touch controls just don't float my boat entirely. Yeah. It's also on PS3, and you can um, use the Vita as a second controller, which is something you don't see in a lot of games. I think that's really cool. So you can, it, you have like two people over. You can have one person playing on your TV and one person playing on the Vita in the same game. Nice, right, kind of like Guacamelee. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Very cool. And uh, Rocky, 
What have you been playing? Well, as I've been gone for three months in the entire summer, I missed out on a lot of like game releases. And I know there was one I was hyped for right before I left because I left in May, and I didn't come back until August. You know, touring the country. Um, but uh, I I really wanted to play Animal Crossing. Uh, new oh. Leaf before I left, and of course it released after I was already on the road. Such um, a good because game. I, yeah, I mean, like, the one for the Nintendo DS, you know, the, the Wild World was, like, just completely, like, engrossing, like, uh, the first Animal Crossing really didn't interest me, like, there wasn't enough to, to do, really, like, the, the grid system, and, but, uh, Wild World just completely, like, not only did it engage me, like, my family got interested in it, and we were, like, it just became this whole, like, family aspect. Not only was I, like, looking for, like, maybe, oh, man, cool, this guy's got this uh, Master Sword thing for my house. I totally would love that because I'm a Zelda fan, you know? And then they come out with, like, another portable version, which, uh, in my opinion, is the only way to do Animal Crossing because who wants to come home, sit down, and play Animal Crossing when you can take it with you? Uh, yeah, it's just no, a much I better totally option, agree. I think, to, to yeah. do things. Animal Crossing, like on the consoles, has never made sense to me. But I actually think um, Animal Crossing is like one of the best social games. Like, oh yeah, by far. Like, there's so many things you can do in this uh, the 3DS uh, installment of Animal Crossing. It's just crazy. Um, the only only thing I'm saying is like I, I saw the stuff advertised, and I'm still you know getting you know I'm not playing it every day. I'm only getting to play you know whenever I get a spare moment. But um, it's just uh, some of the stuff you unlock, like to get some of these new features going, doesn't happen, I guess, for a while. Yeah, because there's some things I haven't gotten to yet, and I'm just like, where is it at? The beginning is pretty slow. Yeah, you have to be pretty dedicated to get through uh, most of it in the beginning. Yeah. So I'm I'm trucking on through. That's good. That's good. I quit. <laughs> <laughs> you quit Animal Crossing? Yeah, I quit the drug. Uh, one day, it was just one day I didn't check it, and then the next day I didn't check it. By the third day, I realized I hadn't played in two days, and the thought of the amount of weeds and the chores I would have to do just <laughs> scared me. Well, it turns out that the the weeds uh, aren't actually as bad as they were back way back when. It's just, it's so time consuming. The I, freakiest thing that happened to me, I think, is I had the game on the first day. Mm -hmm. um, I was playing it, you know, and I, you know, I save my game and I go to sleep. But I wake up the next day and all of a sudden I'm looking at you know, like, the preview screen with, like, the little animal walking around in your town and it's like, why is there snow? And why is there fireworks? Oh no. What's going on? <laughs> so I click on it, and the little lady's like, yeah, it's January 1st, 2012. And I was like, what? No! I didn't reset my clock or anything. Like, it didn't make any sense. So I reset the time back to the correct thing, and, like, luckily it kept up with where I was the day before, and, like, nothing had changed. It was great. Nice. Nice. All right. Is that, that that's it for you, I assume? Yeah, I'm good. Okay, well, I guess I'll, uh, what I've been playing is Kingdom Hearts HD 1.5 Remix, Reliving My Childhood in HD, it's beautiful, everything about it is fantastic. And if you've never played Kingdom Hearts, now is the perfect time to play because you get the first three games for 40 bucks in HD, then the next HD pack will come out with the, presumably the other three and you'll only be missing one other iteration which is on the 3DS. And then Kingdom Hearts 3 will come out eventually, and you'll be caught up. So I totally recommend that if you've never played the franchise before. It's definitely the Max Roberts, can we expect a review on Go Left Gaming of Kingdom Hearts HD Remix? Most likely. I've been trying to figure out how I would review it. Do I review it as an HD collection, or do I review each game individually? If I do each game individually, it's going to take a bit longer, uh, because I'd have to play through... Well, you play through two of them. One is uh, all the cutscenes in HD uh, in a movie theater setup, and it's actually supposed to be really cool. I'm really excited to get into that. But uh, I definitely will do some form of a review for the game, for sure. Okay. Uh, the other game I've been playing, uh, I've been chipping away at Mario & Luigi Dream Team on my 3DS between classes, before bed, 
things like that. Really good if you're a Mario and Luigi RPG fan. It's right up your alley. It's the combat's oh. deep and so satisfying. That completely reminds me. Um, that is, like I, I played the demo for that and it was like I was like, whoa, this this is a this is really intense and I love the way you know the different worlds and everything mm-hmm. and how long the demo was really impressed me too. Like they're yeah. really showing off a lot of the game. It blew me away for sure. I was. I I downloaded the demo before I purchased the game, and I played through it. And the demo, there's four sections in the demo, and each one took me a minimum of maybe twenty to thirty minutes. Yeah, I mean and that's saying a lot. That's like a good barely scratch the surface. Two hour demo of just kind of the beginning of the game. It's really it was a, if you haven't if you're kind of on the fence about the game, definitely try out the demo because you're definitely getting a lot of game time just from the demo. And by the end of it. If you like Mario and Luigi, like RPGs, I'm sure you'll end up go picking up the game for sure. Uh, that reminds me, when I get my paycheck, <laughs> very nice. There's magical words. Uh, <laughs> when I get my paycheck, dot dot dot. <laughs> yes, paychecks are beautiful things. Beautiful, beautiful things. Yes. All right, I think that's what we've all been playing. Are you guys ready to dive into the news? For the week? Let's do it. Hold on, I've got to get my snorkel mask. Ah. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> I like that. That was good. Uh, first up on the list this week for gaming news is at a pre-TGS press conference, Sony announced quite a few things, one of them being a redesign of the PlayStation Vita. I thought we should talk about <gasps> that. And Mitchell, Mitchell here, I believe, is the only yeah. one out of us who owns a Vita, and it's actually going to be pretty great to get his input on the Vita because the biggest change between the two, uh, the Vita 1000 and the Vita 2000, mm-hmm. is the remodel got rid of the OLED screen and replaced it with an LCD screen. Did, it did. Which was a very interesting move. Most people think it's because of the battery, which now has an extra hour of battery life. And even uh, Sony's Andrew House explained why uh, they got rid of the OLED screen. Quote, the main reason that the LCD panel can now uh, is used can now realize an image as high quality as that of an OLED panel. End quote. And, and I'm going to call BS on that. <laughs> yes. Did you guys look at the picture I sent you? Yeah. yeah. Yes, absolutely. I did. By the way, a hilarious thing. Did you all see the hand from the character behind? I thought that was like, part of the screen image. No, first. no, oh, man, that's <laughs> no, no. I I recognize it. And it, it's um, Nayaki from Dongen Dongen Ranpa. It it's a um it's a PSP game that has an anime that I'm a fan of. But no, I found it hilarious because it, look, it looked like he was um going over to go steal the PS Vita. <laughs> nice. Yeah, in the image, I'll actually I'll throw the image up right here so you guys, if you're watching the video version of this podcast on mm-hmm. Go Left Gaming's YouTube channel, you can see it. The PSP, one, I mean, the Vita 1000 is up top, and the Vita 2000 is down below. And there's a clear difference between the, yeah. the Christmas and the color. And I just, I want to get your opinion, Mitchell. What do you, um, as a Vita owner, what do you, mm-hmm. what, is there anything appealing about this, uh, redesign of the Vita at all to you? Um, or would you not. still recommend the 1000 model for people that may not have one? I mean, I'd have to wait to get my hands on it, um, because like the big things they're toting with it is it's a little... It weighs a little less, and it's a little thinner, right? Mm-hmm. I think it's 15% thinner and 20% lighter, or vice versa. I know those are well, the percentages. That, well, it isn't that the Vita even really had a problem with thickness. I mean, it was already pretty thin exactly. on its own. I, I think the Vita, the model it is right now, is perfect for what I want. I think the OLED screen is beautiful on the Vita. I think it's one of its best features, and it, it's really weird that that would be the thing that Sony would take out. Well, uh, I actually... That's one, of the, that's one of the things that the Vita has going for it. Definitely. In my opinion. It's one of the best things it has going for it. I, I agree with that. Not And I don't own a Vita. That OLED screen, though, is absolutely beautiful. Mm-hmm. I just looked it up. It's 20% thinner and 15% lighter. Well, okay. I... Yeah, see, uh, I've never... Go ahead. Anyways, no, I have... Um, I have a feeling the reason why they got rid of the OLED screen is the fact that um, 
PS Vita, until they made the price drop, um, was not selling very well, like, at all. Mm-hmm. Um, because of the fact yeah. that not only were the memory cards outrageously priced, like, I mean, uh. a, for a 32 gigabyte card, for an SD card, that costs you, like, $12. A micro SD card, mm-hmm. maybe, like, 20 A PS Vita, $100! <laughs> You cannot justify that. And another thing is, is that they barely sold any of them at the $250 price point. And even at that price point, they were losing money on it. So they had to recoup it for memory cards, Mm -hmm. which was just stupid. Because, I mean, I'd be more willing to pay more for the actual system than the memory cards. But um, But they probably are willing to do LED screens in order to not be losing money on the Vita... And maybe um, lower the price of the memory cards more. Yeah, and it's it's interesting. The new Vita remodel does include some internal storage, but it's only a mm-hmm. gigabyte, which it's only a gig. You're not going to be able to put anything on gigabyte that. Gigabyte is like yeah. game saves. Yeah, I, I mean uh, the new new Vita game, Killzone Mercenary, day one patch, uh, one point zero seven gigabyte patch. That won't it's even ridiculous. The, the patch wouldn't even fit on this. Uh, I know Uncharted's a four gig game. I mean, you have to buy a memory card regardless. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Weren't those discounted at that conference as well? They, I, I think at the TGS they just revealed the new iteration. Because mm-hmm. I know at E three yeah. or was it after E three? Yeah, I remember they dropped like the one hundred down to eighty, which yeah, is still. They, too much. Yeah, no outrageous. Right. Yeah, it's still... It's it's not that the Vita's too expensive, it's the memory card is too expensive for me. That's yeah. what's holding me back. Um, also... I think the Vita's an awesome platform. I, I just want to get that out there. Oh, I totally agree. I Through PlayStation Plus, I have a whole Vita library of fantastic yeah. games. I You know, when I see them at stores, uh, you know, on display, I love picking them up, and that screen is so beautiful and crisp. It's just, I want to own one. I do. I really, really do. Especially since it's going to be like a second screen experience for PS4. Yeah. But Mm -hmm. it's just too, those memory cards, the price for the memory card doesn't justify my purchase of the system. That's kind of where I'm at. Are you going to be able to do remote play on the PS4 with the PS Vita? Yes. Yes. You can play any PS4 game on your Vita through remote play. Oh, yeah. It'll just it'll do all the processing and the power on the PS4, and then it'll stream that to its five-inch OLED screen or LCD screen mm-hmm. if you have the second generation. Which that alone almost justifies my purchase of a PlayStation Vita. Yeah, I because has it been confirmed you have to be on the same Wi-Fi network as the PS4? No, uh, there was a crazy <laughs> yeah, there was a crazy Japanese commercial. And I saw called, that. It was titled "A Day with PlayStation." And this mm-hmm. girl, you know, had her PS4 on at home, and she was playing Knack. Then she had to go to school, and at a break at school, she turned on her PS Vita over Wi-Fi and started playing Knack right there at school. Crazy. Obviously, it's a commercial. Mm-hmm. We don't know how I don't that's going to work that. in real life. It's, I don't see that working very well. There, there'd be a lot of lag, wouldn't there? Depending on the Wi-Fi networks. I mean... Well, I know over in you on steroids. Well, I mean, over in Japan, um, they do have a much better internet mm-hmm. setup than we do over here in the U.S. Because it's much smaller, it's much easier to. Because as we all know, Japan invented the internet. <laughs> Actually, of course. <laughs> I'm well, kidding. Hmm. That's a pretty picture. All right. All right. Uh, speaking speaking of the PlayStation Vita. Uh, another thing they announced at their pre-TGS press conference, Sony announced something kind of out of the blue. It really yeah. caught everyone off guard in a really, really good way. And it's called the PS Vita TV. It's It works just like a, uh, a Google Chromecast, Apple TV, a Roku box, except it's for your Vita. And it has a mm-hmm. Vita card slot. You can plug in a Vita memory card, and you play all your Vita games on your television with the DualShock 3 controller. And through a patch in the feature, it'll be able to stream PS4 games. It's a hundred dollars for just the box, and one hundred and fifty with a memory card and a controller. And it's only in Japan right now. That's just a price conversion. 
So if you buy one of these, it's like having a PS4 in another room. You could you mm -hmm. could take this anywhere and you'd have your PS4 with you. And it's it's the size of a deck of cards. I mean, it's crazy. Yeah. To me, this is more enticing than a Vita. Well, I agree. It basically is a Vita. Yeah. Yeah. It just removes the portability. Yeah. And I personally like it because anytime I want to play my PS3, I have to disconnect it from all of the craziness I have it hooked up to upstairs yeah. and then bring it downstairs and connect it up to all the craziness down there. But if I could just have a little thing that I could just keep down there and also use as a streaming box, then right. mm -hmm. I mean, that'd be worth it to me. It's such a, it's such a sleek, tiny little box. I mean, it's no, like I said, a deck of cards. It's got a power input on the back, an Ethernet port, HDMI. Is that a USB port in the back there? I can't really tell. It's not zooming in for me. Looks like a USB port and some other port in the back. It's an it's an impressive piece of tech that really kind of caught everyone off guard. Mm -hmm. But I've been hearing rumors that they're only going to release in Japan. I think their plan is they're releasing it in Japan first. It just and then they're going to slowly roll it out. That just doesn't make sense to keep that tech only in Japan. That thing is yeah. too cool. And if it's true that it's only in Japan, I mean, they're not region locked. I would, I would import one. It's probably cheaper to import that than it is to buy a Vita here. Yeah. But here's the kicker. What's going to happen is they're going to bring it to the U.S., and they're going to be like, the Ethernet cable for this thing costs like $300. <laughs> well, it has a um, built-in Wi-Fi. I'm, well, I, I, think, I think what Rocky's trying to get across is that it's just going to have something that's outrageously expensive in order to recoup the um, any like. I mean, you still have to buy a memory card. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it, a, it came with one, though. Yeah, but it's probably a 4 gig. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and if you want to do anything, actually, you have to pay pretty much the same price again for mm -hmm. a memory card. Congratulations, you turned on the system. Your memory's full. <laughs> All right, so I found something interesting. So this is called the PlayStation Vita TV. First off, I think that's a bad name. I think they're limiting their self with that name, calling it PlayStation mm -hmm. Vita, because I think it's so much more than just a Vita accessory. Mm -hmm. Um. But after that was announced, I remembered that back in January, someone found a Sony trademark of PlayStation TV. And it was described as like an HBO, Hulu type streaming service. So I'm wondering, I'm curious if PlayStation Vita TV is what that trademark was referring to, or if PlayStation TV is going to be like a, a service within PlayStation Vita TV. Well, I know on the thing that said that it would do Hulu and um, some other Japanese exclusive um, streaming services. I, it would I, make sense to me for them to just roll those in via updates, just like Apple TV does. I mean, I'm, you get all sorts of channels now on Apple TV, and it just, I think it makes sense. And it's, that, I mean, that's a video game console and a streaming box in one. And it's not just a yeah. flimsy, you know, gaming console. That's a... That's a PlayStation Vita, and in the future, that's a PlayStation 4. I mean, mm -hmm. the thing is that if they release this in America, they could, like, take down Apple's dominance in the um, TV streaming box market. I mean... Along with they're Roku. The, they're the same price. The only the only real competition as far as price goes, if that's all you're looking at, is the Chromecast, which is only $35. Yeah. Well, I don't know if it'll take down the Apple TV because a lot of that has to do with the Apple ecosystem because you're always going to have your iPhone on you and Apple TV, can't you just control like music and everything on it with your iPhone? Yeah. Well, that's, mm -hmm. So I think they're kind of different markets. I think this will be pointed more towards like the OUYA market whereas the Apple TV is more of like the people who have an iPhone and they want a streaming experience, like a movie, television, music on their TV. Whereas the PlayStation Vita TV will be more for the gamers who want it on the go. And I mean, I'm, I mean, it still could take those gamers that do, that would otherwise buy an Apple TV. Yeah. Um, from Apple. Mhm. Mm for sure. I I know if they announce it in the West or even if the price is you know affordable enough, I definitely would love to have a PS Vita TV. I think about the max that they could charge for it would be around 120 bucks. 
I, I'd agree with that. And with a bundle and stuff, I mean, mm. if you own a PS3, you already have a compatible controller. So, I mean, it's yeah, uh, it's a steal for the tech that's inside that little box. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, it's 150 with the controller. It's mm-hmm. 100 just with the box. Yeah, and, and the controllers mm-hmm. right now are 50 bucks. But once the PS4 mm-hmm. comes out, I'm sure controller prices will drop as well. Yeah. Well, I don't know about that. The PS2 controllers stayed the same price for, like, ever. Did really? they? Mm-hmm. Huh? Yeah. It's totally possible. I mean, they're... Ooh. Are you guys... Yeah. Is that everything we got to say on the, the Vita TV? I think so. All right, I think it's a cool idea. I... Oh, oh um, I would like to add one more thing real quick. Okay. Um, I think that it will be really good for the people that just want to play... Um, like people that really like old Sony games, because the thing is that you can download any of the um, PlayStation One or the PC graphics engine um, games, or the PSP, or a lot of the PS Vita games. But like people like me that love the PS One, and it, you just don't want to buy a fancy new system and you just want something to play PS One games on, you could get the um, PS Vita TV and just play it on that. Yeah, absolutely. It's totally. This little box has a lot more potential, and it it just came out of blue. It's so. I mean, imagine with Sony's partnership with Gaikai, I mean, we could even see PS3 games streamed to this thing. Ah, that would be awesome. Yeah, possibly. That a hundred dollar PS3. Man, that'd be insane. But I don't know because you only got up to thirty-two gigabytes of storage. They announced at the TGS press conference a sixty-four gig. And that will probably cost really you good. about the cost of a PS3. That's a $100 <laughs> card. And it, it it would stream it. It wouldn't store PS3 games on the memory card. Oh, 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 okay. Yeah. Um, let's move on to the news to you know, switch from Sony to Nintendo. They confirmed, was it today or yesterday? I believe it was yesterday. Uh, the 15th character for Smash Brothers Wii U and 3DS. Challenger. Princess Peach. Confirmed. Gasp. Gasp. Very what fair. a surprise. Yeah. I'm going to say yeah. her character model is very impressive. There's a lot of detail. There's a, there yeah, was one I was, shot I was... where she shoves her hands out like this, and there was detail in her gloves, and that's, that's impressive to me for coming from a, a Nintendo game. Absolutely, yeah. like that was something I noticed right off the bat. I was like, "Whoa, you can like actually see the little creases in her glove." Mm-hmm. And um, I mean, there was I couldn't really pick out a flaw. Like you couldn't tell. Oh, that's a that's very pixelated, right? That no, the Wii U's uh, doing pretty pretty well on that. I and think. when I, there, her three DS model is impressive. I was, I think her three DS model was more surprising to me than it was for her Wii U model. It's it's rather uh, striking to see the quality yeah. they're putting on the 3DS. And I think um, something I've really noticed is that the Wii U version really looks like it's going for a, a lot more brighter color scheme mm-hmm. than in Brawl, because in Brawl, everything was a bit darker, had a bit darker gradient to it, and that's something... Whenever I first saw our new model... Um, I saw the dark one in. It's a lot easier to make darker stuff look more detailed than brighter oh stuff. And whenever I first saw her, um, her Wii U model, I thought that it didn't look as detailed. And then as I looked at it, it looked better and better. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She, Peach used to be my main in Melee, and uh, she kind of fell off the um, my choice in Brawl. But it, since he's balancing, you know, between Brawl and Melee for the Wii U and 3DS iteration, it might be... It looks pretty good. And she looks like she has a couple new moves. Um, you can see in some of the pictures, she's got... She uses her crown as an attack, and it looks like her up B has changed from the Paracel. Or maybe even her up A. That could be it. She's got, like, a swirl around her, like a ribbon. It looks pretty cool. But Toad's still there. Toad is still there. Uh, one thing, Sakurai did say that that that's like uh, it could be subject to change. Any of these moves could be. So maybe Toad, maybe Toad, uh, Toad will probably stay. But um, I, I like Toad. I love surprising people with Toad. 
But no, one see. one thing though that I just find very interesting, not that I, I don't want Peach in the new Smash Brothers, is Sakurai has come out and said um, that slots in this roster are very exclusive because they'll have identical rosters, the two versions. And obviously because of that the, the 3DS limits the size of the roster. And it's just we've reached fifteen characters, which is near half the size of the Brawl roster, just a little shy of it. And I mean, we filled it with quite a few veterans. We only have three new characters so far. Where are the new characters? What do you What do you guys think about? This? Well, my opinion is is that in Brawl there were a whole bunch of um, copies of characters, like Falco and um, Fox played pretty similar. I know that there were a couple of minute differences, but they played for the most part, fairly similar. Uh-huh. And, mm-hmm. I mean, there were just a lot of characters that were almost just copies of each other. Mm-hmm. Like, um, even in Melee, I know Ganondorf was pretty much Captain Falcon, just slower and a bit more powerful. Mm-hmm. So, you... Mitchell? I, I think I agree with the W. They'll probably do away, away with a lot of the, the clones and uh, just really balance out what they have. And maybe, possibly, hopefully, they, they continue to give us more unique characters, brand new. Yeah, I really... The, the I want to see some new ones. Pretty bad. Me I mean, um, the PlayStation All-Stars roster Ooh. was, like, only, like, 20 people, wasn't it? Yeah, after the DLC rounded out, it's around 20. Yeah. I thought that was a little short, so I hope that we get, like, maybe 25 characters on here. But I didn't even think about character copies. That was a good point, Alex. Like, Falco and Fox... Uh, mm-hmm. Lucas and Ness, uh, all those kind of characters were pretty much the same. So if they cut those out, they still have plenty of room for new guys. Absolutely. I, I just I want to start seeing new characters. I think that's my biggest concern right now is we only have three new characters, and they're great Which characters. Are, I mean, we fit trainer right? Yep. Uh, Villager. That one surprised me. <laughs> and Mega Man. <laughs> I thought that was a joke. I thought yeah, it was man. too. I was like, "Aha! Thanks, internet community, for the hilarious." Jo- oh wait, it's real. I love the yeah. Fit Trainer. Yeah, she looks like she's gonna actually be a fairly interesting character. She- I first saw it, and I was like, "Casual gaming has made its way into oh, yeah. into stupid Smash Brothers." Now. I think I, it's just. I think it's really smart because it's self advertising. They've got you know, We Fit You coming out eventually, and she's a surprise character for sure. And it's a great yeah. use of Nintendo's um, characters to choose from. And really, if hardcore fans of the franchise have a big issue with her and think she's a waste of a space, they don't have to play as her. They can totally neglect her existence in the game. But I think she'll be a surprise powerhouse. Do you think sure. we'll be able to play as a me in this version? I, I'm guaranteeing uh, that's going to happen this time around. If they I, put Wii Fit Trader in there and they didn't put and they don't put me in there, I'll just be amazed. My, my, I think they would put a me in there. My only concern is, like in Mario Kart Wii, if you had a me, the size and weight of that me affected how your character drove. The size and weight of your me should affect, I would think, how you play in Smash Brothers. So if you had a, a shorter, fatter me, it would be it would be more like a Wario. It would be a heavy hitter, but it would be slow, but it would have a lot of mm-hmm. power. But if you had a, so cool. a thin and a thin, you know, thin small one or a thin tall one, you know, I feel like that's just t- that's too much thinking for at least the 3DS to do to decipher between that. That's true. Well, I don't, I don't know. I mean, they could pretty much just copy over um, like a move set from one of the characters. Like if you had a tall and slim one, um, you could pretty much just copy over Luigi's. I mean. Or. Then why or maybe the Wii Nintendo will glaze over it like they have in the past, and they'll just make all the Miis the same size relative to all the other characters. Potential? Yeah. Ah, but as long as just the face is there, I guess, you know, that's the purpose of the Mii. That's it's important. I think I think a lot of people would like being able to fight as themselves, themselves. against, like, Mario and Bowser. Yeah. I mean, after, after all, the photo dojo, mm-hmm. well, that was, like, the most fun thing ever on the DSi. I mean, did anyone else play that? Yeah, 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 yeah. I, oh, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that. Yeah. Playing as yourself, watching you like do your own special moves was like the coolest thing in the entire world. Yeah. For sure. I, 
I'm so stoked for Smash. I, f I think it'll come out at the end of next year because that's just they've they've got a great lineup here in the next couple of months. Mm -hmm. it, and then they've got Mario Kart in spring. I there's no way we're seeing Smash until after at least next year's E3. What does Nintendo have going yeah. for them this year? They have Wind Waker HD. Is that it this yeah. holiday? No, 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 no. Um, Wind Waker HD comes out. The digital version is a week from today, actually. Then the real mm. version comes out yeah, in October, buddy. October 4th, I believe. Then oh, and then they have Pokemon. Are... Yes, they have Pokemon Oh, in yeah, October. X and Y come out. In... They also... Uh, then in November, they have Super Mario 3D World. Or Land. Which one is it? Is that Wii U? World. Yeah, World on the Wii U. Yes. Okay. That uh, also on the same day, the twenty second, uh, Legend of Zelda: Link Between Worlds launches on the 3DS. Oh. Also the same day as the oh, Xbox yeah. One. So, that's an interesting. Oh, yeah. see how that goes. And then in December they have Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze from Retro, which Ooh. I'm stoked because Retro made a fantastic it. Donkey Kong Country game. Uh, a couple of years ago on the Wii, so I'm stoked. Yeah, Donkey to see. Kong Country Returns. Mm -hmm. I'm stoked to see what Tropical Freeze is and how hard it is. And then they really don't have anything announced between then and Mario Kart 8. They've got a pretty strong lineup this okay. holiday. Yeah, they just mm -hmm. have to compete. It's a lot stronger with, than I thought it was. Yeah, they just yeah. have to compete with next gen stuff, next gen yeah. systems. They got pretty much all of the main um, franchises covered, huh? Yep, yep, we're just waiting for Zelda. Like, a real HD well, Zelda. Real Zelda Wii U. That yeah. would be great. Um, so my computer's to... dying. I'm going to go get a cord. Uh, please talk amongst yourselves about things. Okay, sounds good. Okay. Well. You know what I actually would like to see for the next Zelda? And I know people might think that this is crazy, but I would actually like to see a futuristic Zelda. No! Go. No. Yes, yes. <laughs> you're, uh, you're kicked off the podcast. <laughs> no, y'all can't get around me that easy. No, you can't. Uh, no, you can't put Zelda in the future. Unless it was Ocarina of Time, where he did go in the future. But it wasn't the future. It was the future for him, but not us. Anyway, let's... I still start. think that's a good idea. No. Let's Fun. let's truck along to the next piece of news, which a lot of Pokemon news came out. I wanted to keep it in the straight of Nintendo. They announced that there is a Mega Mewtwo X and a Mega Mewtwo Y. So there's two different versions of Mega Mewtwo. They announced gender-specific Pokemon, so the same Pokemon, but two different versions based on your gender, mm -hmm. and um, you know trainer customization for the first time. It's. I haven't been this excited for a Pokemon games since Pokemon Diamond. It's look. Okay. It's looking to shape up to be potentially the best Pokemon game to date. So I'm not a Pokemon fan by any stretch of the imagination. The only I ever played was Blue on the Game Boy Color. You, Classic. You played a good one. You played really. That's all okay, you need cool. to play. So and can you, in like, a couple sentences, what's huge about X and Y? It's, oh, why do I want to oh, play X and Y? Pick me! Pick me! Pick me! Uh, all right, Rocky, you you tell our friend Mitchell here why he should play X and Y if he had a 3DS. Well, the big changes, I would say, especially, uh, you know, big things that are coming. Uh, uh, it's now in 3D. Um, it's no longer 2D, which I think is a really, really, really big deal. Mm -hmm. um, like, the character models are no longer just flat walking on a flat, you know, aerial view, like the camera seems to change a lot. Um, battle sequences are also no longer dull and boring and without motion. I mean, you've got so many cool animations going on. Um, it's crazy to think that we're, you know, on the sixth generation of Pokemon as it is right now. Mm -hmm. um, other things that completely changed Pokemon as we know it this time around, um, I can't believe we hadn't thought about this before, but... Um, Mega Evolution, which is taking evolution like one more level, but like I think it's only for like during battles, and it's then you only go back. Battles. To... Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Which I still, I still, that's really cool. Um, another thing uh, they've got going on is uh, the new type they added this time around. Um, 
is the fairy type. And this hasn't, like, they haven't added a new type since, like, Steel and Dark, and uh, I think those were the only two. Maybe a few more uh, were added. And that, and that was in um, Gold, wasn't it? Yeah. Was that? Yeah, like, it Gold. was in the second game that they introduced, like, brand new types. Mm-hmm. Um, and now they're introducing the fairy type, which is actually, believe it or not, this is it's kind of a joke, I think. Is super effective against anyone got a guess? Anyone that doesn't Ghost know? Ghost Dragon. Dragons. Yeah, it's super effective against dragons. And it's also resistant to dragons, so there you go. Um it's it's, it's gonna I'm be gonna take my Clefairy and go beat a dragon air. That's what I'm gonna do. Mm-hmm. Whoops. Alright. Well, my biggest issue has with Pokemon is that as an avid RPG gamer, my first game I ever played was Final Fantasy IX. Um, is that Pokemon to me has always just been boring. That has just been what it, like how it's been to me. Mm-hmm. I feel the opposite. Every time I try to play a Final Fantasy game, I end up falling asleep. Really? I just haven't played a Final Fantasy game. Play I've 13. Tried. It's good. I I've, I've, I've heard 7, 6, and 4. Yeah. Well, yeah. In my, six, opinion, in my opinion. Yeah, 6 is my absolute favorite. Mm-hmm. 7 was revolutionary and a great game, but 6 is my absolute favorite as far as um, story goes. Okay. Favorite gameplay is probably 13. Okay. Yeah. When I when I go for an RPG, I'm thinking Paper Mario or Kingdom Hearts. That's usually mm. where I lean. Thousand Year Yeah, Roar. my RPG. My my my. Sorry to interrupt, Max. Go ahead. No, I was just okay. saying. Okay. Um, like RPG, like the first. I think really the first video game I ever, other than like the original, like Mario, was obviously like Pokemon. Like I see, I have I have my Game Boy Color right here. Um, I couldn't read when I started to play Pokemon. <laughs> I think a lot of us didn't know how to read when we started to play Pokemon, so we had to kind of, you know, um, uh, what is it, progression by elimination. Okay, well, that those symbols keep popping up, so let me try going somewhere else. And I think, you know, the RPG, it's not really an R, I mean, it's not as uh, in-depth an RPG as, like, Final Fantasy is, or a lot of other games mm-hmm. is, which I guess is why AW kind of finds it dull. But because that's what we knew and that's what we started with, or at least me and people like me, it, I can't stand the complicated systems of like Final Fantasy and other such things. Hmm. I can follow that. I can agree with that. Yeah, and I can so see If you want how... your children to play Final Fantasy. <laughs> Final Fantasy, and to a more extreme um, point, Persona. Um, but... I can see how Pokemon is more of a widely accessible RPG mm-hmm. and um, and how it appeals to a lot more people, whereas Persona and Final Fantasy take a lot more strategic um, thinking beforehand and a lot of like pre-battle work in order to um, in order to progress them. Pokemon is a lot more active in battle stuff. Yeah, I totally can agree with that. Um, let's move on to the next piece of news here, which is Grand Theft Auto V's map. <laughs> quote, We're covering this too? <laughs> quote, yeah. impresses, because holy... We could be here all night. Cow. We really could. <laughs> well, um, that map is insanity. Well, I would just like to say one thing. I know, I know that it is massive, but I'm, I'm scared to death that it is going to be that's going to suffer from test drive unlimited syndrome which Ooh. is um, test drive unlimited I love the game it was a mm-hmm. wonderful game mm-hmm. and ho- I hate the rubber band difficulty but wonderful game um, the problem was is that it was massive and it was wonderful to have all these roads but nothing was detailed nope, nope. no I, I mean no one lived in that city. I am telling you, <laughs> I nobody. Can, I think that's one of the things when people look back on Grand Theft Auto Four. Def- I know I do when I look. It felt it was a big, big sandbox city, but mm-hmm. it was empty. There was no. There, it was. It was lifeless. But you just look at the footage and the gameplay, and you hear critics talk about the game. 
no one has anything negative to say. I I don't know if we're suffering from, you know, blindness because the name Grand Theft Auto V is in front of us. But I really think that this world is robust and alive and deep. I think there's a lot to do. And I actually, we were talking about paychecks earlier, got paid today. I'm picking up my copy on two, midnight <laughs> at Best Buy because you get $10 if you back if you pre-order at Best Buy. But that game, the ambition in that game, that I can't, reviews hit Monday, I'm pretty stoked about it. Well, I am right now having a very hard time deciding between buying Diablo 3 or um, Grand Theft Auto 5. Diablo 3 is a lot more fun as a party game. Like yeah, having people over. I'm about to, to, to determine it for you. Get Grand Theft Auto, beat the single player in the two weeks, and then GTA Online comes out. And you can play that with your friends. I'd but, recommend Torchlight. If you've ever played Torchlight, have you ever played that game? Um, is it on the PS3? Nope. Good point. I played <laughs> it on PC. No, no. What I want is I want something fun that, to play wherever my friends come over. And that's the problem okay. I have with mm -hmm. a lot of modern games is that multiplayer is. Is almost all online now. There's so mm -hmm. few, like, couched multiplayer games. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just play Mario Party. Because my Wii doesn't my, work. My first Xbox, and you can play Halo 2. <laughs> <laughs> but no, dungeon crawlers are fun to play. Yeah. Like, with, with other people. Mm -hmm. With other people. Alone, not so much. I can agree with that. I can see where that's coming from. I definitely can. Uh... Do you guys have anything else to say about Grand Theft Auto V? Just how it's the fifth one. Oh, is it really? It is. I don't what? think it is. The Never played Grand Theft Auto game. It's oh my not the God, fifth one. Guys, wait. Yeah. Wait. <laughs> technically, it's not the fifth one. Just like but, Mario Kart uh, Seven and Mario Kart Eight technically aren't the seventh and eighth iteration. Right. It's like they're like this is the staple for. Mario Kart or mm -hmm. Grand Theft Auto or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. I think they just say, we're taking a step forward. Kind of like the iPhone 5 wasn't actually the fifth iPhone. Alright, yeah, touche. It's up there somewhere. It's a number. Oh, by the way, um, real quick, I, I'm just going to make like little, parenthe um, little parentheses here. <laughs> um, I, um, I, wh whatever. Uh, it's late. Anyways, <laughs> I, I, I'm just going to us. No slacking. I, yeah, anyways, I'm going to go back to Pokemon real quick and say, Oh my god, there's a dinosaur! Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, we totally totally skipped that whole, like, discussion. Um, do we even, do we talk about Mega Mewtwo? Yeah, we talked about how there's an X and version and a Y version. Did, did you talk about what's special about Mewtwo X? Yeah, shoulder Mewtwo pads. Mewtwo X... Mewtwo no, 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 X no, looks no. like no, he's off the... not like maybe a few hours before we, we started uh, recording this. He's actually not just a psychic type. He's a psychic slash fighting type. Yeah, I mean, you could tell that by, like, His how... shoulder pads. Yeah, he was bulked up on steroids. The man be, the man be pushing up them roids, man. <laughs> but Using his mind. But I'm wondering how they're going to handle that entire mega evolution thing. Like, how are you going to, like, teach abilities... No, every Pokemon? no, it won't. I, I read that somewhere. That not every Pokemon will have Mega Evolution. Yeah, not. Do you everyone. think every first gen Pokemon? No, not will every have... first gen. But if they don't have, like, every if they don't have a Mega Evolution gen for Gengar, I'm done. Yeah. Unless it looks stupid. Gengar. Uh, Gengar is the best. What, I, 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 I. I, I, I I play Pokemon Stadium with my friends sometimes. We come, they come over and we play Pokemon Stadium, and I have my Gengar transferred from my Pokemon Blue game. They have, they try to ban me from using Gengar because Gengar is just an animal in that game. He's untouchable. He's super fast, always hits first, and super powerful. And you just put him to sleep. Gengar confirmed for Super Smash Bros. Wii U. Oh my gosh! If that was. <laughs> Everyone be quiet at Max having a moment. <laughs> All right, let's Wait, um, let's dive into our, our last piece of news, which kind of flows. <coughs> we'll just kind of bunch it up with our topic of the week here. Um, 
which is that game developers, pretty high up, they're all uh, anonymous game developers, but they're allegedly pretty high up in the industry, claim that the PS4 is 50% faster than the Xbox One. And that news kind of broke today. A lot of people were comparing numbers. And apparently developers say that PS4 is faster than Xbox One. And I just wanted to hear everyone's take on that piece of news. And we'll kind of flow well, it in with our topic, which is just what is next gen. The real question is, how much faster are they both than the Wii U? <laughs> <laughs> um, about 100. <laughs> um, anyways, but my qu- my qu- uh, my um, suspicion with this is I'm always scared to accept anonymous um, people a, saying anonymous things. People. Well, <laughs> like anonymous sources saying stuff before um, before it's released. Okay. Like it says anonymous um, developers. And, I mean, if you're not going to tell us who the developers are, how can we know that you're not just lying to us? Or well, how... The well, source... I know, I, know, I know that the source is Edge and yeah. all that. But, I mean, I'm just always a little bit finicky about accepting um, yeah. an unnamed source. I mean, is even if a, it uh, is, is true, I at this point we should probably still take that with a grain of salt because mm-hmm. the consoles aren't even out yet. So developers have only had a few months to even like really dive into their architecture. So over the years, they might even out a little bit. They're gonna learn how to use the Xbox One a little bit better than they do now, and it, the uh, mm-hmm. speeds could really start to equal out as they start to learn how to use it. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I don't think it's, it should be as big of a deal as it is right now. I think PS4 50 percent faster than Xbox One is a great headline, and that's why you're seeing it uh, yeah. around a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, and that is, and I mean, according to this, it's saying that it's 50% faster in, um, let's see, I have it written down here. Um, and it's ALU, it's Arithmet Logic Unit, um, is 50% faster. And, like, just its memory, like, um, its RAM mm-hmm. is 50% mm-hmm. faster than... Um, well, the, the Xbox, Xboxes. the Xbox One is running DDR3, and the PS4 is running DDR5, both eight gigs. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. So I think that's where the memory comes in as a boost. Wait, how do you run DDR5 on on a um, on eight gigabytes? Don't ask me. Sony did it. All I know is that's what's inside. Whatever. Um, that is the official statement. Is what's inside that thing? What? What I was thinking about, though, was, yeah, we we see the headline. We see PlayStation 4 is 50% faster than Xbox One. We see that headline because we're online, we're following the news. But is the average customer going to know that? Is is the average customer even going to care? Because, no, probably not. Because that yeah, Xbox One, Xbox One's going to have Halo 5. Xbox One's going to have your you know, Call of Duty clan yeah. carrying over. And, exactly. That's what I've been yeah. talking about with my friends. I've been betting like all of my friends, no matter what, the Xbox One will sell more by the end of the year than the PlayStation Four. Um, I I th- even though I would beg to differ. Go ahead. I would beg to okay. differ that uh, just because Sony's coming out and they're saying how many pre-orders they have, and Microsoft isn't. I just that's true. But I would but also I, I would also like to say the fact that I don't I don't want to buy an Xbox One just out of principle because of what they originally were going to pull with it. Oh, yeah. There's... Mm-hmm. But, See, again, I totally... does the average customer know that? Yeah, no. that's where I'm basing that off of because when mm-hmm. a customer sees the Xbox One in store, one, they're going to be confused because it's called Xbox One and people are probably going to think that's before the 360. But once when they realize what they're looking at, they're going to know that, hey, I play Call of Duty with all my friends on Xbox 360. They're moving on to the Xbox One, so am I. They're not going to want to do research into the PlayStation 4 because they've already, like, considered the PS3 an inferior console, so the PlayStation 4 is not going to be any different in their mind. So exactly. I'm, I think a lot of people would be resistant to that change. They're just mm-hmm. like, I, I have an Xbox 360, let's get the new one. Yeah. And, I mean, a lot of the, um, a lot of the customers are, um, are, like, below... Like, I mean, they're, like, 10 to... 10 to 15 is around the age of the average um, 
Xbox 360, from what I can tell from Xbox Online. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for sure. Now, just kind of to let this bleed into our uh, topic of the week discussion is, a couple a couple weeks ago, actually two weeks ago, I, I put up a vlog for Go Left Gaming on its YouTube channel, and I was just talking about next gen and what that really meant, because obviously Grand Theft Auto 5 is coming out, and that's a huge ambitious game that really is kind of blowing the industry's mind, but then obviously you've got, you know, the PS4 and the Xbox One are coming out, and those things are pushing the edge to graphics and just the abilities and particle effects and bigger worlds, just like Grand Theft Auto V, and I just kind of, I want to hear your guys' take on what what next gen means to you. Does it is it determined by a date and a new console coming out, or, or do franchises and games determine what next gen is? Well, my personal opinion is that uh, I think the power is really um, determinate on what I think next gen is, mm -hmm. um, and also the games. But my main thing is I am a massive fan of Gran Turismo, um, the racing simulator on, on PS3. And what I'm most excited about is what this new power, what Gran Turismo 7 is going to look like. <laughs> um, yeah, anyways, but... The main thing is um, with the physics engine, um, mm -hmm. you can have a lot more realistic, um, like how tires grip the road and uh, and um, how a chassis reacts to um, being under a certain amount of weight, losing that weight, and how it affects the dynamics of the chassis, and all that other kinds of stuff. Is that I think that the is that we are edging the road of graphics really. I mean, there isn't really too much more that we can go to without really going um, virtual reality. Yeah. Um, in my opinion, I mean, I'm sure that we could probably go even better. But at the current moment, I can't see us getting much better than the PS4. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that we're going to, ha that pretty soon we're going to have to see people um, innovating in, that, in like the areas of physics and... Um, um, I, I mean, I don't really know too much about how they can improve it. Okay, definitely, Mitchell. What do you What do you think next gen is? What is the next gen to you? I would say that a console or a group of consoles are next gen when they can provide an experience that the previous one couldn't. Okay. So I when agree. I get a game on PS4 like uh, like Infamous Second Son, I think is one of the few next gen games that we're seeing. And I say that for, like, a lot of different reasons. Uh, graphics is only one part of that. Because, mm -hmm. um, obviously, when people think next-gen, they want beautiful games. And Infamous has that, but Infamous has, like, you know, the motion capture and the facial capture. Like, my favorite part of that E3 trailer was when he went up in the air and he had that little <laughs> cocky smirk on his face and yeah. he went back down. Like, that was just one of those little subtle things that make the experience that much better. Mm -hmm. Um and then, like, little tweaks you can do with the gameplay and, like, particle effects. You see that with, like, Resogun and Infamous Second Son. Like, those kind of things you just can't do on a previous console. Mm -hmm. um, like, Wii U... I, I, I would think I would consider that this current gen because I don't know a lot that you could do on Wii U that you couldn't do on the Wii. Uh, there's a, I mean, there's a ton of experiences on the Wii U you can't, you couldn't do on the Wii. I like just very yeah. recently, Wind Waker HD. There's no way. I mean, that game is gorgeous. It really is a total. Mm -hmm. It's not just it's not just a rehash of the game with you know sharper textures and models and looks prettier. I mean, the thing the game has a whole new lighting engine. Everything from that game it all, it looks like a totally brand new game. There's just that whole second screen experience is, is integrated in the system, unlike the PS4 and the Xbox One, which both have second screen options. It's not integrated in the system like the Wii U. And I think once developers finally come up with something genius for the Wii U gamepad, that's when you'll start seeing people saying that, you know, you can't get this experience anywhere else. Fair point. I mean, I'd say that Wii U is slowly getting to next gen. Again, but when mm -hmm. it first came out, I didn't think the experiences were anything that I couldn't get on the Wii. I, I mean, like you do, that. you do have that second screen, which changes things to some degree. But 
I I never thought about upgrading to a Wii U because I was perfectly content with the Wii. Mm-hmm. And you see, um, but with PlayStation Four, I see the kind of things you can do on PlayStation Four you could never do on PS3, and I already have mine reserved. I'm mm. super excited for what you, you that's gonna hold. Yeah, yeah, buddy. High five. High five. And you see, I agree with you, um, Mitchell, on the fact that um, the the Wii U to me just kind of felt like they just got a Wii, upgraded the graphics just a little bit, and then um, put a touchpad in with it. Okay, that, that's how it felt to me. All right. Yeah, it felt like a gimmick to me. Honestly, mm-hmm. it was. Um, I was just like, dude, Nintendo, you've completely. I mean, from from Cammy Dunaway to the Wii U and the 3DS, you've really disappointed me. Mm-hmm. And then you know, slowly but surely, they're starting this you know uh, uphill struggle. I would call. You know, they're slowly releasing these good titles for the system, making some of us like me and Max want to buy it. Mm-hmm. Um. Uh, so uh, you know it's it's yet to be determined whether or not the Wii U is going to own up to what it should be. Um, I guess we'll determine that in its lifespan coming up. Now, as far as what next gen really means to me, um, I feel I'm at like one of those one of those talk sessions. You sit down <laughs> in a circle. Anyways, uh, next gen. I mean, back when we had like what in Nintendo 64, we were like the next next gen, right? What's the next gen going to be? What's coming up next? What's Nintendo going to think of? Or what's Sony going to think of? Or, well, I guess Xbox was... Yeah, Xbox was around. Um, I, I wasn't a real big Xbox fan back then. Um, next gen to me is just, you know, what what are what have the companies come up with next? What is next on their plate? After all, next gen is just a shortened word of the next generation. As in, like, you know, these consoles keep having, like, families, I guess you could call it. You know, they have, like, sons or daughters, and, you know, you've got, you know, N64 is, you know, an ancestor to the, to the GameCube, who was an ancestor to the Wii, who was an right. ancestor to the Wii. You know, that's just kind of how I feel, you know, whatever the company, you know, what, what are they, like, putting out there? Like, what is their next idea? of what the next step in gaming should be and that you know and what all three together kind of symbolizes you know that era in gaming you know you have to look at all three parts or maybe there'll be a fourth one someday I don't know but the big three right now you know coming together and seeing what all three of them have to offer mm-hmm. that that in my in a nutshell is next gen the next generation of right. gaming I can see that uh, the, the way I look at next gen I think next gen is now I just look at games that have come out this year Bioshock Infinite the Last of Us, uh, Gone Home, and uh, potentially GTA V. I don't, I don't know yet. Obviously, the game isn't out yet. But I look at games like that, or even Beyond Two Souls, which also isn't out yet. Those, those are experiences. I don't think the PS4 and the Xbox One will have for a long time. And that, I, those are experiences that you you couldn't get before. You couldn't get those on previous things, and I don't think you'll see it on these next-gen consoles for a while. I think it's really what a developer puts out on its system and the console and the experience of the game. When when a game goes and it changes the industry, that's when it's next-gen. I mean, Gone Home has changed the way video games and interactive storytelling. That, it blows your way. Uh, the Last of Us has changed the way the world and the story weave together in character development. Bioshock Infinite just blows your mind. It's just a mm-hmm. bit. It changes the way you blow your mind. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Beyond Two Souls looks graphically on par with next gen. I mean, the emotional uh, drive they're going for at Quantic Dream and things like that, just, that's next gen to me. In Grand Theft Auto mm-hmm. V, it's ambition, it's scale. If that world really is as robust and alive as it looks, that's next gen to me because that that's right. never been done before. I th- I think it's about the games, not so much the systems. Obviously, the power inside the system helps propel those games to where they've never been before. Mm-hmm. But it's when a developer makes an experience you've never seen before. I think that's next gen. So, so you said you don't think those experiences will be on PS4 for a while, right? Right. Well, I, uh, I could see Second Son being up there, okay. but that's that's February. Uh, that's you know not at launch. I'll say. I don't think the Xbox has anything like that lined up for a while, and I think, 
I don't think anything really for the PS4 after Second Son. At least it's been announced. There's, everybody's Gone to the Rapture was the one that came to my mind. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah the Chinese room. I was a huge fan of Dear Esther. I don't know if you ever got the chance to play Unfortunately Dear Esther. Unfortunately not, no. But it's, that game was just all about the story and the experience. Like, you were basically just walking through a story in that game, walking and observing the scenery and having it kind of tell you a story. Mm-hmm. So I think that um, Everybody's Gone to the Rapture could be mm-hmm. mind-blowing based on Dear Esther. It was an awesome concept. Mm-hmm. It, uh, it definitely was. But you're right, other than that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And other I agree that, with you, Max. Okay. No. Now, I agree with you on the fact that story is one of the most important parts in um, in games, pretty much, because that pretty much is what, for me, makes me keep playing a game. Yeah. Unless you're Mario. Unless Mario. Yeah. <laughs> or you know, Sonic or something like that. If you're anyone Nintendo-related. Well, Zelda's, 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 Zelda's story. story Metroid story. Yeah. Right. Metroid story is is okay. It's like they have two different like kind of things going. They have one that story doesn't really matter. You're in it for the gameplay because you already know that Bowser's gonna steal Peach anyway. Um, or you know the other side, which is like, oh my gosh, where is the Legend of Zelda going this time? Or where's Metroid? Mm-hmm. You know? Right. That's uh, kind of how I feel. That was an awesome discussion, guys. I was I was mm-hmm. glad to hear other people's input on it because do the vlogs by myself. I uh, I honestly don't know how long we've been talking. And I'm a bit concerned about the time, but yeah. so I think we might skip the game we had planned. Uh, we'll okay. save it for the next episode, which which is named. It will be named. It should be named by the next episode, which so, um, yeah. will lead into the outro here. The next episode, uh, the structure we kind of came up with was um, a biweekly structure. So every other Monday is when we we'll release it. We record them on Fridays. That gives me time to edit and put it up. Mm-hmm. But so every Monday. You can find whatever this show's name is. We don't know what it is yet. You may know before we do right now, which is kind of like time travel. It's kind of weird. But um, so every other week, you can find an episode of this on iTunes and YouTube for the video version, which is just a recording of the Google uh, chat, and I'll throw images and video that relate to what we're discussing, and you can click links to take you to those videos there. So, and we're actually going to have the audio, we're, just to clarify, we're going to have just the audio on iTunes. Yes, just the audio will be available on iTunes Okay. Uh, for your listening pleasure. You won't be able to see uh, A.W.'s machete, unfortunately. Yes, yeah. yeah, that beautiful machete. So why don't we just kind of go into this outro here, the same order we introduced ourselves. Uh, just say where they can find you on the internet, plug anything you'd like to plug, and we'll wrap up the show. So, Alex, why don't you go ahead? Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's been wonderful talking to all of you. (laughs) Anyway, (laughs) um, I've been Alex Ray, and if you want to reach me, you can follow me on Tumblr um, at Alex dash or slap. What what is this called? A dash? Dash, A a dash. A hyphen? A hyphen? Okay, it's this thing. Alex (laughs) hyphen of hyphen awesome. Dot .tumblr.com Okay. Any, anything you'd like to plug, shout out, anything like that? Um, everyone should go watch Psychopaths. It's awesome. Seriously, yeah. I love that show. Go I watch... watched like 12 I, I watched like 12 episodes last night. It was really good. <laughs> everyone yeah. go watch that show. He really mm. needs a girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> Mitchell <laughs> Yeah. I'm just kidding. Go, doing? Where can they find you on the internet? You can find me anywhere you want to look. Uh, probably under the name mdog2438. Maybe Mitchell Morgan thrown in there. Um, that's really all I have to plug. I mean, shout outs. Like, shout yeah. out to my cat. Okay, cool shout cat. out to Mitchell's cat. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Mitchell's like, cat. Baby cat. We got really creative with his name. His name's Baby Cat. Okay. Was, was oh, got I have a so dog. Speaking of baby, baby cat. cat, my cat just had babies. Maybe there's some sort of weird correlation oh. here. Hey, yeah. Hey, hey, hey. And my and one well, of my dog's name is Mama Dog. <laughs> Mama Dog and Baby Mama Dog cat. and Baby oh my Cat. Gosh. A team <laughs> show power up. We could have like a really funny <laughs> sitcom. Oh my gosh! There you go. Oh sitcom. no. The Go Left Gaming sitcom. <laughs> Rocky. Anything? Where did he go? 
I see him. Oh my god, I can no. see him. He's frozen. At the very no. end! Come on, Rocky. Oh. Ah, he's frozen. He's going to log out here in a second. He's going to cut out. No. Should we, well, should I'll we... plug him. I'll plug him for him. I know you can find him on YouTube at uh, the username Rockdar12, R O C D A R 12, the number. Uh, he's got some old videos. He's planning on putting some new stuff up uh, from discussions I've had with him. I doubt you want to find him on Facebook or anything. I doubt he'll accept you. But I think that's all I can plug for him. He loves Metroid and Zelda. He's buying the Zelda Wii U like I am, which comes out a week from today. And uh, I was fixing to say that he was single, but he's actually not. Yes, so, he's yeah. not. So, ladies, sorry about that. Oh, man, it's kind of sucks that he dropped out. Mm. And, yep, there he went. Oh, he's gone. There he goes. He'll try to come back in here in a second. Well, I'll plug uh, myself. Uh, you can find me on Twitter, at MaxTheWhite. I know it sounds a bit racist, kind of, sort of. I'm thinking about changing it. I have some ideas for names. It, it, it was originally a Lord of the Rings thing, wasn't it? Yes, Gandalf. <laughs> you shall not pass. Um, you can also find me at the uh, under the blog that this podcast is under its little logo, its name, Go Left Gaming, which you can find at goleftgaming.wordpress.com. You can also find Go Left Gaming on YouTube. Just under the username Go Left Gaming. Uh, new vlogs every week on Go Left Gaming. Just uploaded episode four, which is about one of my inspirations in gaming journalism. And there's Rocky. Uh, okay. There we go. I plugged you for you. <sighs> what? Why? Are we done? Is this over? No. no we're not still going. Yet. Oh, great. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, Max, hurry up. Anyway, I would say uh, vlogs every Thursday. Plenty of original content on the website. We've got a Splinter Cell Blacklist review going live very soon. Finally got my writer's block kind of gone away. And I'm sure there will be something about Grand Theft Auto V in there somewhere. Uh, so definitely make sure you check that out. And like I said earlier, a new episode of this podcast every other Friday or every other Monday. We record on Fridays. And I think that's it, guys. Thank you all for joining me for this inaugural wait, wait, episode. Did I get to plug? Your plug? I plugged you for you. I plugged <laughs> your YouTube channel. <laughs> talked about your likes. <laughs> My internet is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> is there anything um, else you would like to plug? I I would like to say. Uh, my limited fan base on the internet, um, or future fan base. Uh, name's Rocky, Rocky Rockdar. Um, uh, uh, if you search Rockdar12 on Twitter at Rockdar12, that's me. Okay. Rocky Rockdar on Facebook, or you know, if you feel like hitting on my YouTube channel, which was mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. um, we have nothing new on there right now, but we're actually working on something pretty cool right now. Uh, hopefully, to come at you soon. Thumbs Getting up. Getting back on the, the the trail. Very cool. I would, um... So we're going to be little boppy X style? Uh, yes, momentarily. I would like to just also say you can follow Go Left Gaming itself on Twitter, at Go Left Gaming. And one last thing. If you have any questions, maybe you'd like to give us a topic of the week to discuss, feel free to tweet those at us or email them to Go Left Gaming. Uh, the email is goingleftgaming at gmail.com. Feel free to tweet, email us, any questions you have, post it on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash gaming. Pretty much anything go left gaming you can find us. Uh, so send us in something. Maybe we'll uh, talk about it on the show. And with that, I think we're done. I have been Max Roberts. I have been Alex Ray. My name is now Rico Chavez, but... <laughs> uh, okay. I'm still Mitchell Morgan. Always will be. Always and have been. I am always and forever will be Rocky Rockdar. All right, guys. And that's been episode one. Thanks for listening. And we'll see you next time. Always remember, go left. But what if I have to turn right? <laughs> hey, guys. I hope you enjoyed the show. I hope every episode to take us out with a song. The reason I didn't mention the song in the episode when we recorded it was I didn't know at the time if I would have permission to use this song or not. Uh, the song comes from YouTube user Smooth McGroove, 
you can find his work on YouTube or on Bandcamp. And what he does is he takes video game music and makes acapella versions all by himself with his cat. And I highly recommend checking out all of his work. This is his one of his later latest pieces. Uh, it's Zelda Link to the Past, A Dark World, the Dark World theme. So I hope you enjoy it as much as I do, because I can't stop listening to it. All right, enjoy. I know, I know. Yeah. Uh, welcome I, to the welcome to the tentatively unnamed gaming podcast under Go Missing Left No. We should call it Missing No for the night. Mm. Mm. Tentatively, tentatively unknown podcast <laughs> under Go Left Gaming. <laughs> the tentatively unnamed podcast under Go Left Gaming. <laughs> Shut <laughs> up! Abbreviate that, that! What does that make? Tenet, wait, hold up. Hold up. <clears throat> Crap. I need to find paper I haven't written on. I mean... Damn me and all my writing. Me. Oh, I said damn. Okay. This lighting is not tentatively. <laughs> how, was, how was school today, Mitchell? Yeah, it was school. Yeah, I, how was okay. school? Yeah. <laughs> I had an astronomy test today. I had a math test Definitely today. Tentatively unnamed. I am <sighs> sorry. Math is not my thing. I'm sure it's your thing. Yeah, I got a 90 on it, which is good, I guess. Oh, your webcam froze again. It did? Really? Yeah. Oh. You should just always stay in like some really sophisticated pose <laughs> and just like stay there the yeah, entire time. We're in. Um, okay, so that comes out to T U P U G L. To bugle. We're not a what terrorist organization. <laughs> For what real. Bugle. We're not a terrorist organization. We're just a podcast full of four guys talking about random stuff. Bruce, Shraley, and Nate Druckmann. Yes, Nate.